In this video, we're going to continue semi-solid dosage forms by talking about gels. Gels are transparent or translucent, non-greasy semi-solid preparations with a jelly-like consistency. And as a matter of fact, gels are also known as jellies. When we look at the basic composition of a gel, we will see that they are composed of a network of molecules, usually polymer, that trap a liquid vehicle inside. More specifically, gels are made of a gelling agent which traps water inside if our vehicle is water. And to the water, we can incorporate any active constituent if we are preparing medicated gels. Is that to say that depending on the vehicle we choose to formulate our gel, we can obtain different types of gels? Yes. The most common type of gel is the hydrogel, where the vehicle is water. The vehicle can also be alcohol, oil, or most recently, an emulsion in emol gels all depending on the type of gel we want to obtain. Since hydrogels are the most common type of gels, we will focus on them in this video. Hydrogels have a high water content and after application to the skin, the water content of the gel evaporates, leaving a thin layer which adheres long enough on the skin to give protection, permit the active constituent to exert its therapeutic effect and provide a local cooling effect due to the evaporation. If gels contain an active constituent, they are used as medicated gels to deliver a certain therapeutic effect. Otherwise, they are used for their physical property as lubricants for catheters and electrodiagnostic agents. Let's take a case study. As we know, we can incorporate a variety of active constituents into gels to deliver certain therapeutic effects. One such active constituent is ephedrine sulfate. It's a vasoconstrictor and we can use it to stop nasal bleeding. So let me ask you a question. As a pharmacist and formulator, in which dosage form would you prepare ephedrine sulfate to stop nasal bleeding? Well, out of all dosage forms, even beyond semi-solid dosage forms, gels are the best choice as they adhere for a longer time to the nasal mucous membranes and hence enable ephedrine sulfate to exert its vasoconstrictor action on nasal blood vessels. Gels are better than nasal drops because they are not susceptible to fall in the pharynx and larynx. You know when you feel that taste of the drops in your throat? Yeah, that doesn't happen with gels as they are mucoadhesive. They are better than ointments and pastes, as they allow the patient to breathe without obstructing the air reaching their nose. And notice actually that highlighted in green are the advantages of gels over other semi-solid dosage forms. As such, gels have many benefits over other dosage forms. They are non-greasy, less viscous, transparent or translucent, all of which ensure patient compliance. And actually, if we were to compare the viscosities of each of the semi-solid dosage forms from the most viscous to the least viscous, then we would find that pastes are more viscous than ointments, ointments are more viscous than creams, and creams are more viscous than gels. So overall, gels are less viscous than all the other semi-solid dosage forms. Gels have a smooth consistency, hence are easily applied over a larger surface area on the skin. They are mucoadhesive, meaning they adhere well on the site of application, so they can be used to treat a variety of conditions from hemorrhoids to eye infections. Medicated gels can be prepared for administration by various routes, such as the skin, eyes, nose, vagina, and rectum. Upon application to nasal membranes, as we saw in the previous case study, gels are breathable and they do not fall into the pharynx or the larynx. They mix well with discharges, therefore can be used to treat eczema. Can be applied to hairy areas of the skin, and this is a great advantage of gels over ointments and pastes. And finally, they can easily be washed off as they are water-soluble. Notice also that... We can prepare gels not only in tubes, but also in dispensers, as we can see from this diagram. 
The fascinating thing about formulating a medicament is that you as a pharmacist are the decision maker regarding which dosage form you choose to incorporate the active constituent in. While gels are beneficial in treating several skin conditions, our aim is to ensure the patient's comfort while applying or administering the dosage form. Let's say, for example, we have a patient suffering from burns and itching. He's already very much in pain, and the last thing he needs is something to make contact with his skin directly. So while there are gels to treat burns, in this case, it is more suitable to use a spray to treat the burns since sprays make no direct contact on the skin, whereas we would need to rub the gel on the burns, which would only increase the patient's discomfort. Finally, let's talk about the composition of a gel. As we have already established, the basic composition of any gel is a gelling agent which traps a liquid vehicle. So it goes without saying that one of the essential components in any gel is the gelling agent. There are three main types of gelling agents, natural, semi-synthetic, and synthetic. And under each, there are some examples. Under natural, we have gelatin, starch, pectin, and trigacanth. Under semi-synthetic, we have the most important, which is sodium carboxymethyl cellulose. And under synthetic, we have carbamer. And CMC and carbamer are very, very popular. We also need to add preservatives in cases where gels have a high water content, like hydrogels, since they are susceptible to microbial growth. And we need to add humectants to retain moisture in the gels, such as glycerol, propylene glycol, and sorbitol solution. And that will be all on gels.